Good morning, church. I welcome you in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us just pray and invite the Lord to come and uh, to be amongst us. Heavenly Father, you're an awesome God, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to meet together, Lord, and uh, just to come into your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We say that you would just move amongst us, touching our hearts, renewing our minds, transforming us through your word, Lord. This morning, Lord, as we, we gather together, we rejoice because you are our God. You are our Savior. And you're the one that we want all the time in our lives. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Announcements for this week. I'd like to just remind you that all donations, tithes and offerings, uh, if you could send them to FOLCC, PO Box 329 Rosedale in BC, and the code is V0X1X0. I also want to say thank you very much for all those of you that have been faithful and have sent in your tithes and offerings, although we we no longer do the connection we have in church. We're still receiving an income and the Lord's work is still going forth. We thank you for that. I know that God will bless you for that because he says in his word that, you know, if you are faithful, he is faithful and just to come and just to give you more than what you've given to him this morning. I also need to tell you that we sympathize and uh, our deepest empathy goes out to the Story family, to Carol and to Vasha, an extended family, as her daughter Wanda passed away on Tuesday. Quite a shock for each and every one of us, but we can rejoice in knowing that she gave her life to you, Lord. That she's with you, Lord. She's in a better place. We'll take a moment and we'll just pray for that family. Heavenly Father, we just come and, Lord, we just draw near to you. Say, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be a comfort unto that family, Lord. Be a comfort unto all those that, that knew Wanda, Lord. And that are touched by her life, Lord. And we say, thank you, Lord, that you have saved her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Those are the announcements. We'll move on and we can just start praising the Lord as, as Daniel switches on some music and puts some words up for us here. Let's just sing along and, and just come into the presence of the Lord and give our lives to Him this morning again. <laughs> I'm accepted, you were condemned I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me Because you died and rose again I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken I'm accepted 
Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonder. strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word
Jesus be the source, be my light, be my life. I want to speak to you this morning about the real riches that come from our God. The real blessings that come from the giver of every good and perfect gift. Real wealth cannot be bought with dollars or with gold. For we cannot purchase even the smallest blessing from God in that way. We have been crying out to the Lord that He would pour out or a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit on us. And we have heard and we have seen that it is very important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We have also become aware of our lack of God. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5. And I want to read the first three verses there to you. Jesus is about to give a sermon called the Sermon of the Mount. Talking about attitudes. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 it says there. One day he saw that the crowds were gathering. So Jesus went up the mountainside and he sat down. And his disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. And I believe this morning that the Lord Jesus wants us to. Take note to his teaching. He starts off there in verse 3 and he said, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. In other translations it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When we read this verse, do we really comprehend the real depth and meaning of the Lord's words? Living in a materialistic world as we do today, the very minute the words poor are said, people automatically 
think of the lack of money. And I believe that even in Jesus' time when he spoke to the masses that were getting, the crowds that were gathering there, when he mentioned the word poor, they associated it with the lack of money. And I'm sure when Jesus said that God blesses those who are poor, or blessed are the poor in spirit, many people automatically just lost interest on what was going to be said. And I think it's the same for today. The moment one starts speaking about poverty, there's a tremendous amount of people who want to shut their ears and, and move on and, and, and say, we don't want to hear about poor. But Jesus wasn't just speaking about the lack of money. Jesus was talking about the blessing that would come to those who realize their need for him. You see, one must become poor. Poor in the sense of nothingness before God. Before you can really and truly find the riches that God has in store for you. Now that's a very difficult hurdle for us. One maybe of the hardest achievements for any man. Because we are a generation that believe that our doctrine is self-sufficiency. Which is contrary to the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very thing that Jesus was preaching in this sermon is contrary to the theology of that time as well as the theology of now. Contrary to man's thinking then and man's thinking now. You see, because man's rules for, for life and for living are is a, a code of we can make it, we can do this, we can go and work for this, self-sufficient. And this is the area that we struggle in. We find it very difficult to come into the presence of the Almighty God and have that feeling of, I come and I have nothing to offer. I come and I have to empty myself and get rid of all the things that I maybe have accumulated on this earth and put these things aside and say, Lord, I come just as I am. Just as I was born naked with nothing, Lord, I come to you. A place of absolute resignation of, of saying, Lord, I come to you giving this all up. A spiritual foundation and a consciousness before God of one's emptiness and one's great need. For the Lord. See this lays the foundation for genuine wealth. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Until you get to the place of acknowledgement. Of absolute nothingness. Listen to what it says in the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and we'll read there from verse 4 to verse 8. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. David also spoke about this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. 
Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Absolute acknowledgement that there's nothing that we can bring. Nothing that we can do. It's not what we work and how hard we try. It's because of the forgiveness of our sins or the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to be truly rich, you must come to the place where you have a deep sense of nothingness before God. And that is what Jesus meant when he said, God bless those, blesses those that are poor and realize their need for him. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The realization that we lack of God is a poverty that makes us rich. When you come to the place and face yourself and face God and realize your, your lack of Him and your need for Him is the turning point of becoming rich. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 it says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? We strive for things on this earth. But we must be aware of what Jesus said. That for a rich man, it is nearly impossible to come to the kingdom of God. Matthew 16, 26. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but you lose your soul? Strong words. Again said in James chapter 2, verse 5. Saying there, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. I think we need to perk our ears up. Listen, brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? What's more important, church? To be rich in faith? Or to just be rich? Think about that. Think about your attitude. That's what the be attitude's about. Jesus talking about that to, to, to stir our attitudes, to make us realize that maybe our attitude is wrong. Jesus never says that we're not allowed to have riches, not allowed to have lots of money, lots of things. But we need to be good stewards of that. But Jesus doesn't just stop there and speak about our hunger for Him. He goes on and He says, Those that are poor and realize their need for Him, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For them the kingdom is laid up. Telling us that we have immediate possession of the kingdom. We don't need to wait till the, we die or to become part of the kingdom. We don't have to wait till one day that we're no longer on this earth and go to heaven to be part of the kingdom of heaven. The glories of the kingdom are not only for after death, it is for the now and forever. And the only limitation is our capability of not receiving it from the Lord Jesus as He has promised it to us.
we go to the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 14 and we read there about Jesus speaking about little children and he says let the children come to me don't stop them for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children children and any person that is like these children the kingdom of God belongs to you the kingdom belongs to little children to those who are like them church you know you know you want a little children are <laughs> they the ones that are seeking they are the ones that are poor in spirit they are the ones that realize I have a need they're not the ones that are self-sufficient they're not the ones that that think they've made it all and have it all they're the ones that need the father they're the ones that need the care they're the ones that need the love and they need the blessings and and they're seeking for that they are teachable They realize that they are lacking. What did Jesus say right there in the very beginning? God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for Him. To come to that realization that I have a lack in my life and that lack can only be filled by God Himself. That lack can only be filled by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when our spirit can become like a child. And the knowledge that we gain that we need the all-sufficient God. You see, this unlocks the resources of the storehouses of heaven. I want us to look at a, at a, at a portion here in the book of Luke chapter 18 and the story of one of the Pharisees as well as a tax collector and I just want to read there from verse 13 about this tax collector this tax collector says there but the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed instead he beat his chest in sorrow saying Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. When you read the preceding verses there about the Pharisee, he was looking around at other people and comparing how good he is. But this tax collector didn't look around, he didn't look at his neighbor. He looked at himself and he saw his lack. He was a rich man. He was wealthy. He had great possessions. But he realized that he lacked. Says there he did not even lift his eyes as he prayed. But beat on his chest in sorrow saying, God be merciful to me because I am a sinner. And only you can supply what I need, Lord. You see, that poverty that he had is the key for him to the kingdom of God. See, although we may possess all things, although we may have accumulated much in our lives, all these things are nothing without God. The Bible tells us very clearly <laughs> that all the things of this earth are going to come to ruin, to rust and to ruin. And you can't take it with you. The everlasting life, you go with, with nothing. You leave this earth and take nothing with you.
This is the secret that the poor in spirit have. And they possess everything through Jesus Christ. Another example I want to just touch on this morning is the Lord speaking to Joshua. Found in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and I just want to read one verse there to you. Verse 9. The Lord speaking to Joshua. And he says to him, this is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now we're going to look at the whole story. The children of Israel have been led by Moses, who was a great leader for them. They relied on him and they trusted him. But now he was dead. And now they were terrified. They had leaned on Moses for everything. Any problem they had, anything they had, run to Moses. Moses, you need to speak to the Lord for us. Moses, you need to ask God to do something for us. Now there was no longer Moses. But you see, we realize when we read on about Joshua and how the children of Israel entered the promised land. We knew and hear and see that God had everything in control and under control. And that is exactly where we are at today. We stand before the Lord who has everything in control. God telling Joshua you need to be strong and you need to be courageous is not the most important thing. Most important thing is for Joshua to have realized is that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And Joshua took hold of that. This morning I want you to take hold of that, that when you realize your need for the Lord, and he tells us that we will be blessed when we realize this, because that is the kingdom of heaven that is ours. He is telling us exactly the same as what he told Joshua. He is with us. The blessings of his kingdom are there for us. If only we realize that we have need of that. It's the same as we can cry out as much as we want to. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Holy Spirit, come and pour out your fire afresh on us. But if we don't empty ourselves of the things of this world, if we don't, if we don't push aside the things that are crowding us now and say, Lord, I earnestly seek you. I come to you, Lord, with emptiness. Lord, I want to empty myself of the things of this world. You see, Joshua had great courage. Because his courage came because he belonged to the kingdom of God. He became a spiritual giant because he knew in whom he had placed his faith. That's where God wants us to be. To place our faith in Him. To put our trust in Him. To turn our eyes to Jesus and look full in His wonderful face. So that the things of this earth can grow strangely dim.
That's when we'll find peace, church. That's when we'll find joy. You see, Joshua wasn't rich one moment and then poor the next. He was rich in all the circumstances. I can even tell you that he must probably is the perfect example for us today what it means to belong to the kingdom of heaven. Those words of Jesus resounding for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Those that are seeking the Lord. The resounding words of Jesus for us today. You see, when we call out upon our God and ask Him, He doesn't just say no. Ask me and you will receive, He says. You will receive the power of God. Which will enable us to face the life ahead. And not only face it and just get through it. But to face us with enthusiasm. It will give us a deep inward peace. And remove the fears of tomorrow. We will have that inner joy that the outward circumstances can never touch. Because God is in us. And God is love. See, when you're empty, the Lord can fill you up. Uh, the psalmist says there, he says, My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Church, for us to get to the stage where our cup will run over, we need to empty ourselves so the Lord can fill it and give us that overflowing. kingdom of heaven is so much in store for us so many blessings for us it's not just about a place it's not just about an empire it's about us belonging to it to receive it from him we belong to Jesus that's our greatest joy it's the joy that comes from within us. From knowing that I belong to God. He's my heavenly father. Just like a child will come to a parent, a loving parent. Realizing I belong to you. So we too run after the Father, run after the Lord Jesus Christ. I belong to you, Lord. And then we go to His Word and we find things like He tells us that He's our Heavenly Father and that we become part of His kingdom. Why would I be afraid of the things of tomorrow? Why would I be so concerned about the situation in the world and what's going on and how many people are becoming ill how many people are recovering when will I get a vaccine when will things be coming back to normal I'm an heir of God I'm a joint heir of Christ Jesus. I'm a part of his kingdom. And not only for now, but forever and forever. For the ever 
for the everlasting life. All other things are empty. And if I truly look at the glory of our God, these things slowly grow dim. Considering all these things, I can turn back to the words of our Lord Jesus. Saying to him, Thank you, Lord. You made this promise. You bless those who are poor and realize their need for you. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Realizing, Lord, that the kingdom is there for me. When I realize I need you, Lord. And I don't just need you in crisis time, Lord. I don't just need you, Lord, when, when things are going well. I need you all the time, Lord. Let us never forget that. Even when we are enjoying ourselves and, and things are just, just floating along and, and just wonderful. When life is just, just, just treating us with the best. We sometimes forget who our God is. Sometimes forget these words where he says that God blesses those. All the good things have come from our Lord. Because the giver of good things and the giver of the perfect gifts. Things that endure forever. Things that come from our God. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you teach us the things, Lord, that you want us to know. The things about your kingdom, Lord. The things of how you love us. Of your glory, of your grace. Of your unending forgiveness, Lord. And that you will make sure, Lord, that there is more than enough for us, Lord. More than we can ever ask for, Lord. Something we can never repay you for, Lord. I just say thank you Lord I want more of you Lord I long for more of you Lord you're a wonderful God as we close this morning I want us to just sing along sing the song of I'm no longer a slave I'm no longer bound to the things of this world. I've been set free because of the Lord Jesus Christ. My life is not my own. I belong to Him. Thank you, Daniel. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with so I deliver it from my enemies till all my fears have come. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer.
Hallelujah. When we go from this place today, if you'll make that your declaration for this week, let the world know you are a child of God. You're no longer a slave of this world. You're no longer a slave of fear, the fear of death. Because you are a child of God. The kingdom of heaven is yours. Now by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fellowship of his Holy Spirit. Be with you now forevermore. In Jesus name. Amen.